Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Rhonda. Hey, we're excited to be with you today. We want to talk about holiday stress and what you can do to keep the season, that time of year, happy and good for your family. We need to make clear <coughs> definition of what our expectations are, what we're wanting to happen. What do we want it to look like? What's reasonable? What should we expect? And um, being able to lay that out, talking through the different holidays, talking about any challenges that are upcoming so that we can kind of smooth those out and work on things beforehand and, and anticipate challenged moments rather than just slipping into them. You know, there's special uh, needs for blended families. You know, there's a lot of relationships there that need to be coordinated. Right, and coordinating them earlier rather than in, in the moment can, mm -hmm. uh, I think, keep emotions down. We, name, we may need to lower <laughs> the bar, our expectations of, you know, over committing maybe. It's better to enjoy everything than to look back on it and say, well, you know, wow, we did too much and it was stressful. And we also want to be careful that we're not being people pleasers during this time, as in, trying to please extended family and everybody else while our marriage and family suffers just so somebody else can be happy about the way that went. We may, we may need to just <coughs> say no to some things to keep ourselves from over committing. You know, we can use a scale of one to 10 to prioritize and this helps couples a good bit. If we say, okay, if we did it this way, where are you on that one to 10 scale? If I'm an eight and Sean's a six on that one, that might be a good option. If on another option, I'm a two and he's a nine, that's not a good option because one person is absolutely not happy. And so sometimes that can help us to find what's one that's kind of maybe not my personal favorite, but it works between the two of us and also for our family. You know, a good question to ask <laughs> is, uh, would I regret or would we regret not doing this certain activity or this certain thing? Preparing ahead for family stressors, um, thinking through those family relationships and those things that year after year may have proven themselves to be a negative moment. Mm -hmm. And we want to think, what is that negative moment saying to us, to our individual family members and do we want to communicate that message you know a special area of focus is <coughs> discussing extended family <coughs> challenges that can be a real stressor <coughs> when you're around certain family members that uh, are difficult to deal with some of the challenges might be unasked for advice verbal and emotional abuse even control and manipulation mm. it's good to have some what we call back pocket phrases yeah. in hand. It can help if we categorize our problem mm -hmm. areas and plan ahead on how we're going to respond. So when we categorize, we know this falls into the category of verbal and emotional abuse. We don't have to be abused mm -hmm. just because there's a family event and someone thinks, well, just tolerate it. Yeah. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't have to be, sit there and be lectured. We can politely excuse ourselves with, with full respect and love for another person. You know, sometimes there can be a, a feeling of guilt, like I ought to go around this certain family member or I ought to be around this person and if I don't, they're going to think bad about me. Another thing we can look at is correcting our own contribution. Yeah. Sometimes there's family difficulties and we're egging it on. We can reduce our own negativity. There's discussions that we don't need to initiate we don't have to say certain things when we know that's going to go down a negative road. Mm -hmm. Well, why would we do that? We need to adopt a live and let live mentality and not go into these uh, situations thinking, I need to change this person or need to correct them. Sometimes somebody will bring something up that we don't like and, the, you know, can we change the topic? Can we excuse ourselves and go to the other room or go where the children are? Let me go check on the children. Or do we need to make it a brief um, visit mm -hmm. so that we're able to leave? Hey, goodness, I guess we're going to have to leave. Sometimes we, we could just allow somebody to say something. We don't have to necessarily correct them. They could share their opinion. And as long as they're not hammering it and, and causing some sort of spiritual, mental or emotional damage, Obviously, we have to be aware of those, but sometimes they're not, and we can reduce um, our own contribution to this by just listening. Setting <coughs> personal boundaries and realizing it's that you don't have to allow people 
uh, to uh, be demeaning of you or, or uh, do things that would harm you. I think too many times we try to treat these relationships as if they're very close and personal when they're not. And if we think, is this an acquaintance level relationship or a casual friend re level relationship, there's some things we don't say to acquaintances or casual friends. And just because they're family members doesn't make that okay to say it. And so sometimes we can either request a shift. Hey, can we talk about something different? Or we can just change the topic ourselves. But sometimes we have to excuse ourselves and actually leave that situation if it's wearing away at us spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. And some people find themselves there. You know, there was an instance where <clears throat> Jesus walked through the midst of the people when they were wanting to throw him off the cliff. And, and that kind of shows us that he wasn't just going to let people treat him anyway. And he was going to excuse himself from a situation that he didn't need to be Sometimes in. Sometimes there are some people, especially family members, they don't want to hear it from mm -hmm. us. We need to realize when we get in a situation, are we being influenced or <clears throat> are we influencing the situation and the people that we're around? And that makes a difference. If we are influencing the environment and we carry the environment, which would be our goal as believers, that's one thing. But if we are in a place where we are being influenced by toxicity and is having a harmful impact, it's, it's changing the way we see ourselves or the way our children see themselves, and it's having a more of a devastating effect, that's more of a toxic relationship, and we need to take a different action there. There may be people that maybe there's a spiritual maturity or calling. They can go in certain environments and have an impact or be an influence. But if we aren't in that place and it instead pulls us down, we want to be able to discern, so what does Holy Spirit want me to do for my well-being and my family's well-being? So we don't just need to just automatically go into certain settings and situations. We need to ask ourselves, should I go to this event or should I be around this person at all? That's hard because it's family, but we've, uh, we've encountered a, a lot of people that are challenged when they go to these family events. They feel like they should. They're guilted into it because it's family. And the enemy has an open door to abuse and mistreat and weaken and wear them out as believers. It's actually impacting their faith. Just take some time to talk with your, your family about what's upcoming, what you really want to do, what you wouldn't want to do, and make sure that you're doing things that are healthy for you and your family.